Every Mark podcast show. Kings, popes, witches who conjured up demons. King Solomon of Israel, prophet and first demonologist, a myth surrounding King Solomon is legend. Not only is he credited for as one of the great practicals of the Arab Amramhabletic religions, but his name adorns two of the most infamous criminals of all time, the greater and lesser King of Solomon. Though both were slightly written in the Middle Ages, the inspiration for the names came from the first century pseudopigraphia entitled the Trans- Testament of Solomon, describes the great king's workings with the demons. According to the legend, the archangel Michael appeared to Solomon and gave him a ring bearing the seal of Yoel, or on it believed to be what is known as the Star of David, which allowed him to control and demand demons. Solomon eventually came to command Beelzebub himself after after charging a lesser demon, demon with the task of stamping the seal of Yaha on the great Prince of Hell. And above the Habab Mintel, Solomon had access to 36 other demons to do his bidding. Solomon put the demons to work in constructing the first temple in Jerusalem, which said to house the Ark of the Covenant, Yaha himself. Solomon also acquired knowledge from the demons regarding the disease and disaster that wrought upon the land, the aims of controlling those malignancies. Men- men- is it not surprised then, then that Solomon's name is attached to the Ars Geologiae, one of the five books that is comprised that comprise a lesser key of Solomon, which lays out the heresy of hell, as well as the names and description of seventy two di- demons that composed it. It comprised it, sorry. The legacy of King Solomon, fir- fact of vision, we shall see one of the most important cornerstones of Western occultism and demonology. Pope III, Pope Honorius III, clerical black magic in the Middle Ages. In 1326, a papa bull was issued commanding a pastoral plague of man who claimed to be Christian or probably while probably making pacts with the demons. The statements made in response to its, its explosion in magical practices that resulted from the advent of Latin translations of the Greco-Roman, Islamic and Kabbalistic magical treaties which were pursued and practiced by the church clergy themselves. Since few lay persons were literate or had access to such works, unlike the later which Hunts of Europe, in which, in this case, the call was very much coming from the inside the house. Magical traits such as the Pitrax, Munich Man- Manual of Demonic Magic, and the Solomonic inspired text of the Key of Solomon, the Swarm Book of Heronius, the Grimoire of the Pope Heronius, which attributed to Pope Heronius III, H O N O R I O U S who was spirited the fifth crusade during his during his prophecy that it stretched from 2016 to 2027 the simonic sim, texts are contribution and deepening the law found in the testament of Solomon fueled by the belief that if one were truly pious, and one would evoke and control demons in order to serve God's will. Instructions how to draw magical surgicals, pentagrams, how to make proper animal sacrifices, the use of magical tools, the astrology correct date and time for evacuations, and names of the power that inform most cult practices. Find their basis in these texts. The holy man who utilised. Yoisam did so in a variety of purposes. 
from gaining historical knowledge of fulfilling some material gain or the more nivorous ends such as cursing even such as cursing eventually many of these critical practitioners ran afoul of the Christian Inquisition but stains of these practices remain in the Catholic rite of exorcism it still seeks to evoke demonic forces in order to expel them Isabel Goldie and the Witch's Sabbatat Unlike the complex ceremonial magical practices that church officials were contending with inside their own halls, laypersons also sought magical assistance, did so through the ways of folk magic, which is commonly known as witchcraft. Although historians have sought to neuter the witch's sabbatat as little more than a fragment of the imagination of statistic Christian magistrates throughout medieval Europe. Evidence of pre-Christian folk practices mixed with debilism continues to pester academics who consistently revisiting the evidence of the dark time. One such scholar is Carlio Ginsberg. G-I-N-Z-B-U-R-Y G, sorry who generally describes the Sabbatat, S-B-B-A-T, as a congregation of male and female witches who renounce the Christian faith, desecrate the sacrament, desecrate the sacrament and make offerings to the devil before engaging in shape-shifting, dancing orgies. While Ginsberg Zeg think, does not think it was, this is literally true, he does believe in the basic narrative of the Sabbatat was indicative of the somatic cult existent in Europe at the time. One of the most unique narratives of the Sabbatat comes from Isabel Goldie, a Scottish witch who gave four confessions that, unlike so many others, were not coerced by the use of torture. Goldie, Goldie claimed that she was a member of the covenant, of a covenant, and that the devil would join him in their rituals. He was described as dark, hairy man who sometimes wore boots and, tom- and sometimes cloven hooves. She related that the fairy queen was also present, which would indicate a hybrid practice of paganism mixed with more, more recent influence of Christianity and Satanism. During the rituals, the witches had allegedly assumed the corpse of a child. Blighted crops and turned into animals, with Goldie becoming a hare. Goldie also pleaded he had sex with the devil. She reported that the devil came inside of her, and it felt like a spring well water. The truth behind Goldie's confessions continued to debate among, be debated among scholars, with some chalking up to egotism, some psychosis, some to trauma right, and some believing that she's a damn good storyteller. Yet Margaret Murray believed her confessions were evidence of a European witch cult, and modern scholars, modern scholars like M. M. Wilby, think that some of her confession carries a shadow of truth of European shamanic practices. Alice Crowley, A. L. E. I. S. T. E. R. C. R. W. L. E. Y. In the minds of many occultists, Alexander Corelli is summoned the great beast himself on an idea that helped the fact that Corelli literally adopted the moniker. For, although it is actually Corelli who is not a Satanist, his brand of magic, known as Felmeria, T H E L E M A M A T H E L E M A. Tradition of the right hand path, spiritual practice, and which would set the stage for Wicca. Crowley is alleged to have written some of the Wicca's foundation rituals for Gerald Gardner. This did not pollute him from calling an occasional demon to, from time to time. At one point, Crowley secluded himself in a manner known as Bull is Skin House. B O L E S K I N O. E. on the shores of Loch Ness in Scotland to perform the Abilene Operation A R A M 
A B R A M E L I N from the Book of Sacred Magic of Abilene the Mage. A lengthy ritual that spans a month of period a period of month. Goal is to bring one continu a communication with the holy guardian angel. One stage of the ritual is to the evocation of the twelve kings and great dukes. Think Lucifer, Belida, Satan, all the big boys with the intent of binding them. Crowley was not able to complete the binding potion for Sam because he called he called to Paris by Golden Dawn founder Samuel Liddell. McCarthy Matthews. As a result, the legend has it that the kings and queens, dukes of hell, took out their inevitable frustrations on the local Crowley's housekeepers. Children died suddenly, and the local butcher chopped off his chopped the fingers of his right hand while filling an order for the man. There was written, and has it written the book on the back of a page of the Andalusian operation. A teetotaling caretaker fell into drink and tried to murder his entire family. This isn't in the notorious invocation of demons performed by Crowley, one of the most allegedly inv- invocations in the history of the occult took place when Crowley and writer <coughs> Victor Neumberg, N-E-U-B-U-G-R-G, summoned Shuronzon, C. H O R O N C O N the demon the de- demon who governs the abyss, the Algerian desert. According to Newberg, Crowley tr- traced a protective circle on the sand, inscribed various and sacred names of the god of God around it. He also traced a sim- triangle similarly inscribed nearby to evoke and contain the demon. Crowley then sacrificed three pigeons. Outside of the triangle, gave Nuremberg specific instructions not engaged with the demon. If he should appear, Nuremberg was also armed with a ritual dagger for protection. Nuremberg got into the protective circle and Cody got into the triangle, something he was not supposed to do. The traditional magicians remained in the circle while only to evoke demon inhabitants in the triangle. According to Nubo's account, after Crowley's initial evocation of Sheronism, the occultist fell into silence and slumped over. What appeared next was Kolosho himself, with, which took various disguises, including a woman Zuber had loved, a holy man, and a serpent. The demon began to mock was at Nuremberg. Newberg, forgetting Crowley's instructions not to engage the demon, began to argue. During the argument, Curse started to slightly ease the section, raised the section of the pedagogic circle and leapt into it to attack Newberg. The demon attempted to rip out Newberg's throat with froth fang, throat covered with fangs, remembering to evoke the magic names of God. Nuremberg raised his dagger and forced the demon back into the triangle. Chorazon continued to rant and rave, but eventually his image dissipated, and Crowley returned to his senses to write the book Bab- Babylon, B-A-B-A-L-O-N, in a sand with his magical ring, recalling King Solomon, to signify that he was a Jude and defeated the demon of the abyss. Evocations aren't exclusive to Western occultism. Eastern spiritual practices just been undated with black magic and sources of Western counterparts. One of the most common use of ev- evocation is found in the t- Hindu and Buddhist pra- British practice of Tantra, T-A-N-T-R-T-R-A, a Guruhai Vim Ala Anlandia. A G H O R I V I V V I V V I M A L A N A N D A was an Indian yogi who practiced a tradic form of Hinduism known as Agora, which seeks to overcome all things terrifying in life, often by ref- entertaining and breaking taboos in order to transcend them particularly taboos related to death and corpses. One such practice is Shava Handaha, S-H-A-V, S-A-N-D-H-A, 
N A, which involves sitting on a corpse while meditating. The goal of the practice ranges from gaining spiritual knowledge to gaining control of the spirit of the dead. First time Vin Hanlia ever performed the rite, there was an unwilling student of Jane Aesthetic named Jin Chana Sururi Vana Vimala, who had, had been studying with the Sari for three years, when one night on a new moon, Sari polled with liquor and told him he was to form the rite, because the horoscope indicated Vanahara would have success with the ritual. Vanahara protested, saying he had no way of going to sit on a corpse, and he was terrified of corpse. Sari threatened him with violence if he didn't perform the rite. Eventually, Vivama relented and found himself sitting on a fresh corpse of a beautiful teenage girl. Both Vivama and that girl were stripped nude. Well, that Sari constructed a magical circle around him with black thread to protect against any unwanted spirits. Sari then gave Vermala and Vermala a mantra to recite, as well as rosemary and a dish of raw meat and a bowl of wine to offer to a dentist would, should it one appear. I recited the mantra a few times for a minute and an eerie feeling looked over into the darkness to see a pair of glowing eyes approaching him. <clears throat> Eventually, a jackal drew forward towards him, snarling, baring its teeth. Forgetting himself, he reached his hand outside of the circle, thrust it into the jackal's mouth, declaring, So you want blood, do you? Take this. The jackal nicked his hand to draw only a few bl- drops of blood, but turning into the goddess Shamanan Tara for his eyes. Pinman described the goddess as tall, a beautiful midnight blue skin. She was, had She had a long red tongue hanging from her mouth and dripped blood. Around her neck was a string of decapitated heads, fresh enough to still be bleeding. Bones adorned her arms and wrists, while snakes surrounded her ankles. She bore four hands, which contained scissors, a sword, a noose, and a skull. She was clothed in a skirt of human arms. It was the beginning of a this was the beginning of a romance and of long relationship with the goddess Shamara Adara, whom he would come to call his mother, and he would continue to vote during the rite of Shava, Shava Sanana. Charles Bambridge. Not all summoned dark spirits succeeded, particularly those sceptics who did not merely did so merely out of curiosity. Such is the case of Charles Bainbridge, B-A-B-A-G-E, a 19th century polymorph, who is credited with being the first father of computer with his invention of, dif- of difference engine, a medical, medical, medic, mechanical calculator. He was a, When he was a boy, Bainbridge applied his inquisitive mind towards attempts to the ethical ethical proof that the existence of God, assuming that if he could call Satan up from the eternal realms, he would be able to interview him about God. Bramish pierced together for what information he could from the invocation. Bramish richly, basically entailed cutting his finger to draw a circle on the floor in his own blood, inside which he sat and recited the Lord's Prayer in reverse. He waited for the presence of an even of either the devil himself or one of his fingers, when Burridge respected be, be either an owl, a black cat, a rabbit, or a raven. Unfortunately, Satan declined the invitation. Burridge taught his to failure of his own lack of faith, devil, and called his weak and framed at the time. Nevertheless, Burridge would continue to seek out ethical evidence of the paranormal for his life, including forming a ghost club while at Cambridge. Ricky Casalio, K-A-S-S-O, the Asif King. As much as the psychotic panic of the nineties and early eight of the early of the eighties and early nineties came out of bullshit, whether it was a belief in that Dungeons and Dragons heavy metal were turning kids into devil worshippers, or the suburban neighbourhoods throughout the country were concealing secret satanic cults who were literally abusing the nation's kids on a regular basis. It was all total nonsense. Yet, there always has to be an exception to the rule, and that in, up the insane and comprehensible point in order to justify their beliefs, and for the satanic panic 
Ricky Castro was was the exception. He was a heavy, heavy metal loving devil worshipping psychopath who ended up killing one of his friends that night who claimed to sacrifice to Satan. It didn't exist in real life. The sudden panic would, would have been, may, had have him had to create him. He was in many ways a perfect archetypal type. A youth wasted on drugs, heavy metal on Satan, eventually slipping into madness and murder. He's actually the kind of person that practicing Satanists would trip over himself to slam, scream that he wasn't a tr- real Satanist because of the heterous crimes he committed. Growing up in Newport, New York, Cresto got into the drugs and Satan in New High School, eventually forming a group called Knights of the Black Circle. The group allegedly had approximately 20 members who could get together to sacrifice animals, rob graves, and worship Satan. They were alleged to have held a wool purgeous night ritual in, at the infamous Anderville Horror House. Then on the night of June 16th, 1984, Kester and his three friends, Gary, Lola, Tom, Jimmy Torori, and Albert Quinzonos, went to the woods to take LSD. At some point, Kester and Laura fought. According to conflicting accounts offered at Torori's trial, Kester over either acting alone or on the aid of Cross and Toro, held Toro down and repeatedly stabbed him, chanting, Say you love Satan. Instead, lawyer is reported to have said, I love your mother, which only escaped Grover's rage. In the end, Lola had his eyes gouged out and stabbed somewhere between 17 and 32 times. One of the mur- once the murder was complete, Kessler claims that Satan had appeared in the form of Black Road to convey his acceptance of the sacrifice. Surprising, even in Mrs. Sarkanic panic, the, the police completely downplayed the Satanic annual and instead chalked out the murder to a drug related crime, pointing out to the evidence that Lawler had stolen his tent bags of PCP with Kessler as motive for the murder, as well as the fact that he was well. All involved with tripping balls on acid. In the end, we never know the truth behind what happened in the woods outside Newport, Newport that night. Coso hanged himself after only two days of police custody, while Coso made a deal with the immunity to exchange a testimony against Tadunia, who eventually acquitted at the trial. Then Coroner's changed his story and claimed to be unable to remember everything that happened in the woods. To this day, neither to this the surviving man will say exactly what what took place during the events of what that what became only a legitimate place place of satanic panic history.